Hi and welcome to Hyperledger Fabric, build your first network. In this video, I walk you through one of the tutorials you can find on the official website. Um, I'm going to do this to give you a first impression of how things work in Hyperledger Fabric. Don't worry if you don't understand everything yet. This is just meant to get you started. In later videos, I'm going to talk deeper about some of the other details. Um, yeah, I hope you find this useful. Okay, you can find the official tutorial under this URL. Uh, in the first step, what you need to do is install the requirements. This is mostly Docker and one of the following um, languages like Go, Node or Python, depending on how you want to implement the um, the chain code of Hyperledger and if you want to um, if you're on Windows you need to install a few extras and the easiest way for you is just to follow the instructions on the website and then we can start so basically what you have to do is just run docker on your machine and create a new project folder and change into it and then you can just run one script which will in download and install everything we need Okay, let's do this together. I'm just going to create a new folder here. And then if you already prepared the link, going to install all the, the code we need now. So this script basically is downloading um, the fabric samples, which is a a project folder with lots of um, tutorials and uh, code snippets and uh, then it's going to install the uh, binaries for my operating system and in the last step it's going to pull the docker images I have them already on my machine so that should uh, finish fast Okay, um, if you look into the folder we have just created, you will see that there is now a fabric samples folder and in it a new uh, bin folder which has the tools for my operating system and the docker images. Now the first tutorial we're going to try out is the first network tutorial and in there there's one file it's the which is the basically the main script for everything we're going to do it's called byfn build your first network and um, it's well documented and worth reading through if you want to follow in more detail these steps and with this script we can generate the channel and cryptographic artifacts and we can bring up the network and run a sample scenario and clean up after we have done everything Okay, just to give you a first high level view, um, basically the network structure is defined in three files. There's the crypto config file, which is for the cryptographic um, artifacts. There's the config TX file, which is uh, a YAML file for, that uh, describes the network and the channels. And there's a Docker compose for defining the Docker nodes and services. Hyperledger Fabric is not really tied to Docker. You could use anything you want. You can also install everything manually, but it's recommended and a good way to get started. Now the network itself, just in this uh, diagram, you can get uh, just an idea. So it's a very simple network, which has two organizations, Org1 and Org2, and each organization has two peers. And one of those peers is the so-called anchor peer. So just to get started, an anchor peer is a special kind of peer that allows to communicate with other organizations. Then there's the orderer service, which is a central part to Hyperledger and responsible to create consensus in the, in the blockchain. 
And there's a special kind of node, the CLI node, which allows the script to send commands directly to the network. And the tutorial, well, this is basically three steps. So using the script, we send a generate command, which creates the cryptographic and channel artifacts. Then the main part is happening in the app command, which brings up the network and runs a sample scenario. And finally, a down command to clean everything up. Now the script needs access to the binary tools we just installed. So you need to export the path to make it uh, accessible to the script. Okay, let's just do this. And so I change into the fabric samples first network. Yeah, we can see here we have now the script, we have the artifacts and um, yeah, the YAML files I just talked about. And we can start with the first command is to generate the artifacts we need. So when we look at the at the output from the script, you can see this is the actual command to use. In a later video, we're going to do all these steps manually and create a, a, a blockchain network from scratch. So we have here the CryptoGen um, tool, which generates the cryptographic um, artifacts. Then in the next step and in the following step, we use the config TX gen tool. In the first step, we create the so-called uh, Genesis block, which is the first block in the Hyperledger blockchain. Then we define a channel so we can, the peers can communicate with each other. And then we define or specify two anchor peers, one for each organization. Yeah, so again here, so the CryptoGen creates a cryptographic, a crypto config folder and the configs gen, sorry, creates the channel artifacts folder. And here we can see some of the artifacts, the binary files for the Genesis, Genesis block, for the channels, for the anchors. And in the crypto config folder, we have the, like the, um, the certificates and private keys and so on, all the material we need to communicate in the Hyperledger Fabric blockchain. Okay, the next command will, will be the main part of this tutorial. It will start the Docker nodes. It will actually create a channel. So far we have just defined it. It will join all the four peers to the channel it will update the anchor peers and then it will run the actual scenario. So let's do this. This is going to take a little while. So I'm going to fast forward, fast forward the, the video so you don't have to wait so long. Okay, so the script has finished successfully, which means everything works on my machine. And let's now go through this together. So the first step is just to start Docker with the, the Docker services, the Docker compose command. And yeah, if you recall the, the basic network layout, so we have here the organizations and we have the peers and the order and the CLI node. And as we can see, this is what's starting up here. And then um, we start with, this, with the actual scenario. So first thing we need to create the channel. And in the output, you can see here the actual command. So it's the peer tool 
with the options channel create and then a bunch of uh, parameters. Also note that um, often parameters are passed in using a system environment or environment uh, variables. And yeah, and also you can see here the artifacts we have created. They are passed into the tool. To access these parameters, we can see that Docker creates volumes. Um, to make this folder we have just created uh, accessible for the nodes in Docker. Then after we have created the channel, we let all the peers join. And this is the command, peer channel join. Um, and the address is passed in as the environment parameter. Yeah, it's doing this for all the peers. Frontier one, here's the next one, organization two. And here's the last one. Now we need to update the anchor peers. And you can do this with this kind of command, peer channel update. And we do this for the both of the anchor peers. Now we are ready to actually run our scenario. In Hyperledger, we don't have smart codes, uh, smart contracts, sorry, we have uh, what is called chain code. And before we can actually run anything, we need to install this chain code on the peers. And um, you can have a look at this at this chain code. Let me do this here. Um, you can find them in the folder above. Let me just do it this way. Okay, so you can you can find the chain code in the in the folder named chain code. And here's one example. And um, yeah, it's written in Go. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. What it does, let me just show you what it does, basically. So we have three uh, methods that are important to us. There's uh, one init method, one invoke and one query. And um, yeah, it's a very uh, simple scenario. Basically, you have two entities that have uh, money assigned and you can send money between the entities. So in the init method, you send the names of the two entities and um, the initial values. And then you have one invoke where you can send money from A to B and you uh, pass in the how much money. And then you have a query command where you can send the name of an entity and get the current um, money, the current state of that entity. Okay, so let's um, let's go through this scenario. And I will show you first um, what the script is doing and then later I show you a little bit which is a bit easier to to understand uh, a few diagrams so you will you will see that's a pretty simple scenario what's going on but this will give you a first impression how hyperledger works so in the first step we need to install the chain code on the peers that's happening here so we install, we run the command peer chain code install to this address and provide some um, parameters. Uh, one of them is the, the actual chain code, the source code, which I just showed you. We do this for both peers. Here's the second peer. Now we have installed the chain code and now we need to instantiate the code in, on at least one peer. And this is what we are doing with uh, this command, peer chain code instantiate. And the important part is this one here, where we send the arguments to this method. And so it's the name of the method, the init, and 
the name of the two entities A and B and the values. Yeah, that's pretty simple and we skip uh, all further details for now. Then we query the chain code and note that this is now we query send the this is the address we query peer zero from organization one but we have instantiated the the blockchain in peer zero organization two and we query the value as you can see here the value of a and this is what the query returns 100 this is what we expect now we do an invoke. You can see here peer chain cone invoke to peer zero with following arguments. The two entities from A to B, uh, 10. So basically send 10 of our currency from A to B. Now we install the chain code on another peer. and then query that chain code on that peer. So here's the address, here's the command, peer chain code query. The arguments is we want to know the state of entity A and we get um, the value 90 back, which is what we expected. Okay, let me show you this again in a easier to understand way. So again, we have here our network with the two organizations and each organization is two peers. So in the first step, we install chain code on both of the anchor peers. Our chain code is installed. Then we send an init command to this peer of organization two where we set A to 100 and B to 200. The code has been instantiated. Then we query a different peer on a different organization and ask for the state of A. And the answer we receive is 100. So the change and the instantiation has been communicated through the network. Now we send an invoke where we send uh, 10 of our currency from A to B. And we, in the last step, we install chain code on another peer and query the state of A on that peer. And again, the change has been um, communicated through the whole network and we receive 90 is the value back. That's what we expected. So yeah, this concludes my first walkthrough. Um, in the next video, I'm going to, we are going to build the network manually and uh, extend the network a little bit. And yeah, let me know if that's useful for you. I hope it was and see you in the next video. Thank you and bye.